continuing with the story of polymers, as you add monomers together, you end up with stereo centers. Okay, you know, I told you about stereo centers. I told you to get a stereo center, especially a carbon stereo center. You have to have four different groups around it. Group R1, R2, R3, R4 are different. So that carbon center has four different groups. And you can imagine whenever you're joining two monomers, you might end up with a common sh shared carbon having four different groups on it. So that will lead to stereochemistry where at those centers you either get an S, R or S configuration in the polymer. Okay. So very common. This is going to be very common in vinyl monomers like if you're trying to make PVC uh, and so forth. That's polyvinyl chloride. Okay. It results in the creation of new chiral centers, what I call stereo centers or stereogenic centers, on every second carbon of the chain. So you have your vinyl, uh, your substituted vinyl monomer here. I gave you the shortcut. If you want to know how the polymer will look like, simply break down the pi bond. In chain growth polymerization, the elements, the element count are the same. Okay, the element count are the same. So you make sure you have all elements in there. And then, of course, you put hanging bonds, which would imply polymerization is going on this way and this way. And it's the monomers repeated n times. So if I were to show three monomers so this is a trimer because it shows three monomers okay if i were to show three monomers in the polymer in this polymer you notice that after after every previous carbon like if this is carbon one this is carbon two that is a stereo center because you have a H, you have another group here, this could as well be a CL, you have CH2, and the rest of the chain, the rest of the chain, which which means to the right could be longer than to the left, even though they look similar. Then you have four different groups. So this carbon right here could be an R or an S. Okay, If, if it were specifically drawn with wedges, you can define it as an R or an S. Or an S, so that carbon is a stereo center. Okay, we skip one carbon, we go to the second one. That's what it's saying. After every two, after every second carbon, you get a stereo center. So that's another carbon with four different groups. There's another carbon for different groups, and so on and so on. Now you can imagine either you're gonna have R, 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 S, R, or S, S. S or or R let me write here or R R S there are so many ways S S R there are so many ways these configurations can be arranged and because of those different ways we can define the type of uh, stereo the type of stereo polymers that we end up with Okay, so the configuration is important because that's going to affect the physical properties of the polymer. Remember I told you physical properties, boiling point, melting point, solubility, okay, and even viscosity. Stereochemistry affects all these physical properties. Okay. Uh, there are three types of polymers that can result. The first one is a tactic polymer. If you've been keen in science, you've heard of a tactic polymer and isotactic. Maybe since you're tactic, you've not heard of 
Okay, so attractive polymers have random configurations. Okay, they are stereo random polymers. So like this guy, if this is a stretch of a polymer, you see these two stereogenic centers are on the same side, right? These are le these are on the same side. Let's say they're on the same side, and probably let's say they are towards these are towards us while well, this guy is up on plane up on the plane and then this single um, group is again towards so you see this randomness if it was same side two of them up then two of them towards that would be a pattern but now this is so random okay so we call this polymer a tactic a tactic polymer because of the randomness of stereochemistry or configuration the second one is isotactic iso means similar or same so you can see all these groups on the same side okay and it's after every methylene after every ch2 after every ch2 so these are regular repeated pattern so uh, we have same configurations and we call it stereo regular because there's a regular repeated pattern the next one is syndiotactic polymer this one has alternating configuration okay <clears throat> they have alternating configuration so again it's a regular pattern so it's stereo regular Okay, but we call it syndiotactic because there's an alternation. So you see, this is towards, let me call it T, or let me just write towards, this is up. Okay, towards, this is up. Just like isotactic, uh, syndiotactic, syndiotactic has a pattern. Okay. Isotactic had a pattern, but in the pattern of isotactic, all those groups are on the same side. So it's iso. Here, you have some alternation. So it's still regular pattern, but they're alternating. Okay. So that's where the difference is. Isotactic, the groups are on the same side. Syndiotactic, the substituents of groups are alternating. You do not expect these three polymers shown here to have the same physical properties because the intermolecular forces will be affected. Okay. Okay. Now, the free radical. So let me talk about chain or addition po po addition polymerization. This chain addition polymerization will commonly lead to formation of a tactic polymers. Remember what we said a tactic polymers is this guy that has random configuration because you really don't know how how the approach of the next monomer will will be done. You don't know how the monomer will approach to the already building radical or cation or nine. So, tactic polymers are commonly formed from chain addition polymerization. Okay. Okay. So, for the stereo regular polymers, which is isotactic and syndiotactic, they provide high density polymers with strong IMFs between the polymers. Why? Because there is a predictable pattern. There's a predictable pattern for these two guys. And so you will expect if there is any hydrogen bonding, it's gonna be very strong okay? because the structure is regular. So the intermolecular forces will be stronger in isotactic and syndiotactic because bring bring two of these together, you have more chances of association. So let's say you have another polymer up here. Let me just 
summarize it so you can see what I mean. Okay, so if these red balls were like OHs, you can imagine how you can get very many hydrogen bonding as compared to here where the OHs are misaligned if the red balls were OHs. Similarly, here you get more hydrogen bonding than in the Antarctic. So the intermolecular forces, the IMS between the stereoregular polymers, which could be uh, isotactic or syndiotactic, would be stronger than where you have attractive polymers, where there's so much randomness. Now, to get stereoregular polymers, you need something that's going to control the addition of the monomers to each other. So we use a catalyst called ziegler nata catalyst to produce the stereoregular polymers, which of course are the isotactic and syndiotactic, most preferably isotactic polymers. So here is the mechanism which is, I think, beyond your scope because this falls under the branch of chemistry called inorganic chemistry, where there's no mechanism really. It's usually a catalytic cycle that's described. So I'm going to just break it down to you in the simplest manner possible. So if you take your metal complex with titanium in the middle with an empty p orbital, with a POD, it has an empty orbital, let's say that. So if you add a metal bound to an R group, okay, so the R group will go will bound, will be bound to the titanium by making a bond through the p bond through the empty p orbital. So the two electrons, these two electrons will be thrown into the empty p orbital. The metal will fall off, and it's the metal. Metal will be aluminium, lithium, magnesium, or zinc. So probably you're looking at CH3 Mg. So where this is the M, and this is the R group. So these two electrons will be thrown into the empty orbital. You attach the R group to the titanium. Now you have your active catalyst because right now here this is inactive. So once the catalyst is activated, then it can add onto your first monomer of the vinyl. Okay. So to do so, uh, the the R group will be transferred onto the more substituted carbon. Okay. So this R group will be transferred into the more substituted carbon after making a complex. Okay. So it makes a complex and then the R group, you see how titanium is now attracted to the pi bond? That the two will have an, a, a weak association and then the R group will be transferred onto the more substituted sp2 carbon of the vinyl okay which is this carbon right here and one can imagine that now if this pi bond opens up it's going to be attached onto the titanium so you get this complex so the ch2 or this ch2 will be bound onto the titanium on the top face of titanium will be bound onto um, will be bound onto the R group. That's why you see the R group there. So that's this process is called a rearrangement where the R group which could be CH3 is bound on the more substituted side of the double and then the other least substituted side of the double is added onto the titanium. Kind of a Markovnikov addition. And then you can add a second monomer in the same way Okay. Then you'll have two of these, you'll have two of these structures on top of the titanium once the similar arrangement occurs, two of them, and you can repeat so many times, let's say n times, then you have multiple monomers added onto the titanium, and then usually we cleave off the titanium by water, you just 
hydrolyzed water you get your final product so you can see this controlled addition you are you are dictating how the monomer is added the monomer cannot be added randomly approaching for whichever side it has to do the same same similar mechanistic process of addition so then that's how you end up with um, stereo regular you end up with stereo regular polymers which could be isotactic or uh, yeah preferably isotactic if not syndiotactic so like i said don't be scared about this slide probably if i have to ask you a question i'll ask you which slide which which um, catalyst is used to prepare stereo regular polymers the answer is ziglanata catalyst that's all so we we prefer also to use isoprene units this is a building block to make drugs like menthol that's used to soothe lozenges whenever you have a cold okay but the same isoprene unit uh, can be used to make natural rubber natural rubber so the problem is if you were to follow conjugation okay or if you are to push the mechanism following head to tail uh, you're gonna make a polymer probably by the help of the same catalyst to make a what we call what we call it to make an isotactic polymer because this one looks like isotactic so let's see if we can at least predict the structure of the polymer by pushing arrows so you have this is the head type head side of the isoprene so this side is the head this side is the tail so if we were to bring a tetramer or if we are to bring four monomers so tetramers so we can push this pi bond here open this pi bond here to make a bond between these two which forces this pi bond to move and forces this one to move all this is done by conjugation you make a new bond there so so far we've made this new bond and this new bond okay same process happens this pi bond moves and this opens up to make a new bond which is this new bond and then this pi bond moves and lands here you make this double bond okay and this will eventually open up to attack another isoprene so there's a hanging bond there so this is just showing where the joining happened okay this is where the joining happened after pushing these arrows up there so that is the natural rubber problem is it it's very weak so to make it strong the rubber is stiffened by what we call vulcanization which is just heating in sulfur you take the natural rubber okay you take the natural you take natural rubber and heat you're gonna get this unit which give, which has now a cross linking so probably the polymer was like this when you heat the two polymers they tangle up they tangle up as they tangle up there's a point where they're cross linked probably by help of the sulfur probably the sulfur will come in between and then helps in entangling the two polymers so now the polymer becomes very strong you can relax it okay or you can release it or you can stretch it okay like rubber bands or hair bands they have rubber bands in them they can be stretched and they can be released i think that's a good property that we want for rubber we don't want when you stretch it it quickly breaks it has to be stretched to of course if you overstretch it is going to break 
but we want it to stretch to a point where uh, we can use it if you keep stretching then it will break but at least sulfur helped to stiffen the polymeric structure of fabric so copolymers what are copolymers these are otherwise called step growth these are otherwise called step growth polymers okay or they are otherwise called hetero polymers and you can see hetero will mean different type copolymer means like colleagues working together step growth means you can be adding a monomer from the right side and from the left side at the same time so homopolymers that we just talked about are made from a single type of monomers which is the characteristic of chain or other is called addition polymers but for copolymers they will have different uh, copolymers will have different monomers in it so for homopolymers you'll have the same monomers you see a, 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 there's no B and those monomers could be joined linearly or they could be branched as you see in a branch or they could be cross-linked or they could be cross-linked to make the addition polymer more stronger but for copolymers you have to have two or more types of monomers and have you also have another a number of patterns so probably monomer b is alternated by a b a b a that's called alternating copolymer alternating copolymer or you could have a set of a a set of b okay and then single b single a there's no pattern here you get random copolymer or you could have a set of a a set of b alternating to a set of a with the same count that's called block copolymer it's block because you have sets of of same type of monomers arrangement or you could have grafts where you have same monomers in the longest chain and then the other type of monomer will have will be the substituent so that's called grafting okay just like you'll have a tree or a stem and you want to graft an orange to a, li a lime plant okay so you will cut part of the tree and put a branch there of an orange bird right and then let it grow so you'll be grafting at a, a tree out of a tree so this would be the branches this is the main stem or the longest chain so it's called grafting so graft copolymer the, the name was borrowed from agriculture or horticulture okay so the rearrangements or the arrangements are dependent on the reactivity of the monomers so it depends on who is more reactive is it a more reactive than b okay so case number one if both a and b react fast with each other but slow with themselves that will lead to alternating uh, polymer like a b a b if a b are equally reactive with themselves and each other oh there's gonna be a mess so you could get a b you could get b uh you could get let me say a a followed by b b and then you get b a so there's gonna be so random the arrangement of the monomers in the polymers because they are equally reactive with themselves and each other the first one they were 
um, they were reacting fast with each other but slow with themselves so you don't expect to make sets but here you, it's possible to make sets but at the same time it's possible to have alternation so it's that's random now if a is more relative than b then all a will be consumed first okay so when a, all a's are consumed first then b can come in okay so b now can come in so you get b now the number might not be the same and the same b okay the same b can can branch can cause branching where you get grafting so you might get grafting with this situation here number three you can get grafting because a has to react first before b comes in also you can get just a straight chain without branching okay but you'll have two polymers co-joined with different numbers of the sets so that's not that's not um alternating per se it, it could be technically classified as random but we still also have uh, a chance to do grafting with a b so i would comfortably say situation three might mostly lead to grafting rather than alternation okay okay so block polymers are obtained by first starting with one monomer you start the reaction and then wait then add b so let's say if you want to make block first add the monomers of a okay once all A's have reacted, then you add the monomers of B. You wait. Once all B has reacted, you bring a syringe and pump in the monomers of A. And you have to make sure you've done your math well so you know how many of B's and A you're adding. I'm just writing three of them, but of course it's a polymer. It could be a hundred of A's before you add a hundred of B's and so on. So this will produce alternating blocks of A and B. For graft polymers, they are produced by using functionality from homopolymer, for e.g. isopropene. Okay, the polyisopropene still has double bonds which can be used for other reactions. Remember what isopropene was, it's this guy. And when we did the polymerization of N of this, we saw that you're going to end up with a double bond in between, right? There's a new double bond in your polymer. So that will be polyisoprene. Have you forgotten what, when we talked about it? It's right here. Let me show you. So this is a polyisoprene. I described how you're moving from your monomers to the polymer by this mechanism. So the point is we are making a new pi bond. Okay. And that new pi bond can react with another uh, isoprene and that isoprene might be added down here and you that leads to a branch what we call grafting okay so the polyisoprene has a has a newly formed pi bond which can still do electrophilic addition or free radical addition to make even more branched polymer out of itself and that would be grafting Okay. All of those polymers, like I said, will have different physical properties. So the design of your polymer is very, very important. It depends on what, whether you want your polymer to be soft, hard, elastic, stretchy, thermoplastic or not. Remember what we say thermoplastic polymers are. These are polymers when you heat them, they will, they will, they will be liquidy or lose shape okay but when you cool they revert back the polymer will revert its structure the opposite of thermoplastic is thermoset or thermosetting so with thermosetting if you heat the polymer this changes 
it changes the physical property of polymer permanently. It changes the physical properties of the polymer permanently. And we will look at that shortly. So thermosetting will, will cause the physical property of the polymer to change permanently as you heated the polymer. But with thermoplastic, heating the polymer will temporarily make the polymer lose shape or its physical property. But when you cool, when you cool it, it goes back to the original structure. So thermosetting is the opposite of thermoplastic. Okay. Step growth polymerization are usually produced from two different difunctional monomers. So what we mean is, for example, let's say you have a diol and you want to make an ester. We already talked about esters. Esters, you need a carboxylic acid. Let me remind you. You need a carboxylic acid and you need an alcohol to make an ester. So, and I gave you the shortcut. You just simply lose the H of the alcohol and the OH of the carboxylic acid. You're going to end up with an ester. Okay. So click the rest of the structure. Right. Uh, let's see. I made a mistake. This is what I wanted to draw. Let me change the color. So click the rest of the structure, you're going to end up with that. And that is an ester functional group. Of course, the OH of the carboxylic acid is lost. And the H of the alcohol lost as water. So that's the shortcut. So let's say you have a diol and then you have a diacid okay. so let's say the CH2 is repeated n times so this is what I mean by bifunctional difunctional monomers the monomer has the same functional group on each side two OHS two carboxylic acid so one can imagine that one monomer can add from the left the other one can be added from the right side so I can put another monomer here of my alcohol I'm trying to make a diester in the polymer using these three monomers so again we lose um, we, we're gonna lose the OH of the acid and the H of the alcohol during the mechanism so I'm gonna circle what's lost the rest of the two pieces will be joined same thing here Okay, so you end up with a polymer. You know, you'll be left with OH on the side which can react with another difunctional acid. So I'm just illustrating to you what I mean by difunctional. I know the next slide is still going to emphasize on the same. But hey, would rather learn it uh, while I'm on this slide. So you get that joint on this side and you get uh, this monomer joint on this side. And of course you lost water here and you lost water here. So in this case, I lost, I lost two equivalents of water to, as I made my diester. So this point right there, that's an ester. This point right here, that's an ester. And again, you now have a, you now have two OHs in this trimer. Just like this alcohol reacted, those two OHs will get bound to other two dicarboxylic acids, okay? And the chain will proceed from the left and the right. And that's step growth. You're adding monomers from either side, okay? You will always lose a small molecule on this polymerization. And I've shown you I've lost H2O. Okay, you lose small molecules H2O, HCl, or ammonia. 
So, uh, this is common for step growth polymers. Well, those are called polymers, like polyesters. I've shown you how the, this polyester is building, and polyamides. We'll see those. We'll see polyamides later. So, like I said, we had di O here and di acid there, and we made esters. Okay, ester linkages. So, again, to emphasize, I will repeat myself. Let me just show the oxygen up here. So the carboxylic acid loses the OH in the mechanism of which I'm not going to completely show the mechanism. Uh, if I do, we'll never finish the chapter. So that OH will fall out. The alcohol loses the H. Okay. So you lose water. Okay. OH and H makes water. You lose water. Click this oxygen to that carbon. Just join them with a bond. You get this bond. And what's this functional group? That's an ester. All right. So this side can react with another carboxylic acid. And this side can react with another alcohol. And the process will go on either side. So the alcohol can only react with the acid and the acid with the alcohol on either side. Comparing to chain growth polymerization, where we added monomers one at a time, step growth can add on both sides at the same time. And as you have seen here, I added a, an alcohol on the right and an alcohol on the left at the same time. Okay. So that's the comparison contrast of chain growth and step growth. You add the monomers at the same time in step growth polymerization of make in the making of copolymers, but in the making of homopolymers, in the making of homopolymers, which contain uh, the same homo, which contain the same monomers, you'll have to add one monomer at a time by radical means, cationic means, or anionic means. Okay, the problem is that step growth polymers tend to be shorter than chain growth because um, you are losing water. See, you are always losing a small molecule, either water, depending on what you are making, HCl or ammonia. You have to give this time to go away. You have to give the living group time to be removed. In the, and if you want the reaction to go faster, like I always told you, you have to apply Le Chatelier's principle, which states that when a system is subjected to stress, the system counteracts by opposing that stress. So whenever you're making this ester, for example, if you want the reaction to keep moving forward, as described before in the chemical dynamics, you really want to take out the product as it's formed so you create space to your on your product side and the reaction will be pushed uh the reaction will be pushed uh, forward okay so if you want to drive the reaction forward you have to remove the small molecule that is formed uh, during the reaction usually by distillation for example the water here can be distilled off and then more ester will be made or polymer will be made. So let's talk about polyesters. For example, Decron that is used to make a, a tough material. Okay. I think Decron might be used in the same way as Kevlar would be used to make bulletproof vests. Just know that Decron is used to make tough material for whichever application. So still we have diesters. So again, you just use your shortcut. That should be lost. And eventually, okay. Okay, so I circled the wrong thing. It should be the other way around. So OH of acid will be lost and H, that will be lost as water. 
I can't emphasize that enough. And of course, you know that this H will also be lost somehow. And again, on this side, this OH will be lost somehow with the alcohol H. Okay, this will be lost with the OH of the carboxylic acid of another monomer. So what I'm emphasizing is that this bond should just be stretched outside. Okay, the bracket because the same process will happen on going this way. And then between here, you're clicking this carbon to this oxygen. So that carbon is clicked to that oxygen. There's a new bond in between them, which is this. And that's the ester bond. And then the last oxygen should hang out because you're making a bond going that way to another monomer. So usually we only show the repeated unit in Decron. And then we you have to put the N there because this repeated unit is repeated N times. So that's the structure of the polymer because if you decide to draw the entire structure of the polymer on this slide, you will never finish. You'll just grow old uh, trying to draw the polymer because let's say it's repeated a million times. You lose count trying to draw the repeated unit a million times. Okay. So it's step growth polymerization because again, you're functionalizing to the left and to the right at the same time and you're losing small molecule in this case water so apart from just reacting with a di or one can also decide to react with a tri all so that can react uh, you can imagine having another carboxylic acid here okay so i'm just i'll just use this whole part as an r group and you can imagine having another carboxylic acid here with the R group which is this whole thing so again with your shortcut one can connect this carbon to that oxygen this oxygen to this carbon as you lose your water so in this case you lose three water molecules so I should write here minus three water molecules as you make your extra 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 okay so this polymer is tri it's trimeric like we're showing three monomers bound to one and we make it because we are able to make it because we used a trifunctional monomer partner okay which happens to be glycerol Okay, you can use the same method to make nylons, uh, what we call polyamides. Nylon is one of the most common polyamide. And by now you know my shortcuts, I like using shortcuts. So I'm, instead of writing H2 here, I'm going to show one H here. So we're still going to use our shortcut, just like the alcohol did, the amine will lose a hydrogen. Okay. So which means if you had another amine here, if you had another amine, so with the rest of the structure here, I'm just going to call it an R, you still expect to lose the OH of the carboxylic acid on the right. So this stretching bond is this stretching bond some other reactions are happening to your left and then in between you click your nitrogen to the carbon you click your nitrogen to the carbon this time you're making an amide so which means this bond here is called amide bond then you have the rest of the structure the same same reaction can, ha can happen on this difunctional amine where if you bring your carboxylic acid okay so I'm just gonna call the rest of the structure going up going to the left R so you still lose the H and OH you're losing water click the nitrogen to the carbon so this nitrogen will be clicked to the carbon going out so outward so the carbon might be somewhere here so anyway this is the only repeated unit 
as you lose two water molecules to the left and to the right. Okay, so you're making amide bonds. There's an amide bond here. This also will be connected to a nitrogen. That's an amide bond. You have an amide bond in between, so we call it polyamides. Okay, another nylon that's common is called nylon 6. Okay. Nylon 6 has six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's why it's called nylon 6. You can use water to attack this carbonyl and this opens up. As it opens up, you get a straight chain. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see the NH opened up. So that's your NH. The bond can be used to attack another ring to open it up. Okay, and this side, you probably have an OH group which came from water. But anyway, the key point here is that the ring opened up to get nylon 6. Again, I won't go into detail into the mechanism. Okay, so nylon has an advantage in that if you draw, let's say you're drawing um, maybe six M, uh, three amide bonds in the structure, you're showing three amide bonds and then bringing the three polymers close by you're going to get hydrogen bonding. Remember what we said hydrogen bonding is. When a hydrogen is bonded to an electronegative element like nitrogen and oxygen, you expect hydrogen bonding. So because of dipole moments, the carbon is neg negative. Because of dipole moments, the hydrogen is positive. The hydrogen of NH of one polymer will be bound to the oxygen of the carbonyl of the second polymer. And then what you get is H bonding. And it, it's this H bonding that makes peptides to have coils like in your DNA. Okay. And holds your structure together. Otherwise, all of us will be fluidy because we are made of so many proteins in our bodies that, that would have been, um, very fluidy. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be walking around like slimes. We'll be flowing instead of walking. So hydrogen bonds are important to maintain structure because they are strong intermolecular forces. Okay? So you also see hydrogen bond in Kevlar. Okay? Like I said, Dacron has similar properties to Kevlar. Kevlar is a polyamide. But because of the hydrogen bonding, Kevlar is very strong and is used to make um, um, bulletproof bulletproof vests or, you know, the tough tough tires that you use in your trucks, right? Kevlar is used there. So this hydrogen bonding helps to make the structure very 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 tough of the polymer and also apart from the hydrogen bonding the monomers are smaller and also the it's fully conjugated all those factors make Kevlar the polyamide very strong we'll continue from here